All right, we'll be dealing with um, open loop and um, closed loop hydraulic system tonight. What's a closed loop hydraulic system? This is a kind of hydraulic system where the pump doesn't suck from the tank and the actuators doesn't return to tank. Both systems are in a closed loop to themselves. That means the suction and the return are both close to each other. When you look at this pump now, this is a variable displacement you know, bidirectional pump. So the pump it's connected to this valve of the cylinder and the the other flow too is connected to the other part of the cylinder. So how does a closed loop hydraulic system get its own um, hydraulic supply? So for a closed loop hydraulic system to work, there must be a feed pump supply. That means another pump must supply a prior to the system and this prior is called feed prior system so a feed prior this is supply from, uh, from another pump entirely which might be a um, which most time is a unidirectional feed displacement pump but this pump will supply the, both the high prior and the low prior side of the uh, variable displacement pump so this is a simulation of the variable displacement of, of a closed loop system you have a variable displacement unidirectional uh, bidirectional pump here and you have a double acting cylinder here so when you try to actuate this you actuate it by sending an electrical signal to the squash plate of the uh, variable displacement pump so the uh, thereby altering the squash plate angle of the variable displacement pump at the same time generate the displacement at the pump so now let's see let's have a look at the simulation now when you look at this circuit this is this tank which is the source with the same time reservoir with the source of the hydraulic fluid so the feed pump sucks prayer from the tank and goes into this center this tandem center here this is the point whereby the hydraulic is feeded into the line into the two lines now there is a check valve here. This check valve makes sure the hydraulic in the closed loop doesn't return to the feed supply. Now, in order to regulate the prior of the feed pump, a prior limiting or prior resistance valve is here. So this valve is set to 35 bar. So this keeps the prior on the line at 35 bar. If I adjust this to 30 bar, you will see 30 bar on the line. The only reason why you are seeing 36 bar here is that the 36 bar has already been logged into the line. So it's in, it's safe to use between 10 uh, 15 to 35 bar for your feed prior line so far you have a very good flow so now we'll go back to our 35 bar so the ss our pump our our pump is generating 38 bar here yeah, but we're making use of 35 bar in our system so we can at the same time we can okay we can alter our prior limiting our prior reducing valve to um, change it to 30 bar which is still very much okay for what, for what we're trying to do so now what we'll do now is we'll push our buttons this button starts like a joystick so immediately we we'll push the joystick the squash plate will move and the valves will open this valve is a two by two um so I'm not control and spring return valve with a close and it's a, it's a normally closed valve that means when there is no signal the valve remains closed so this is the prayer on the line this is the prayer on the cylinder, cylinder up prayer and cylinder down pressure. So these are the uh, these are the prayer on the both lines of the pump. So any of the any of the side of the pump can be the suction. Anyone can be the high prayer line, and anyone can be the uh, low prayer line. The high prayer line is the one that is carrying the big prayer, and the low prayer line is the one that is like acting like the return. So fast forward, you have another set of prayer reducing valve here. So what this valve does is to maintain the prayer that goes into the cylinder. As an instance, now for my cylinder up, I have a prior set point of 350 bar. That means no matter the prior my pump produces, this valve makes sure my pump doesn't generate more than 350 bar, irrespective of the angle of my squash plate. Any excess pressure will be returned to the suction of my pump. And this is for cylinder down. This one is set at 300, so we can, since the job of it, of uh, the, the lowering job of a cylinder is done by by gravity most times so we can set a minimal prayer here this which is this, this is dependent on the load anyway 
So now let's try and simulate. Let's try and lift our cylinder up. up. You can see the flow of hydraulic. So this is the high pressure line. On the high pressure line, we have it here on 50 bar. It goes into our valve, into our directional control valve. It is assumed that our push button is on hold. That means it's constantly, is is, is presently on. You can see the pressure on the high pressure side of our cylinder is 350 bar. These are the result of the pressure we set on our pressure limiting valves here. So, if we stop our system, let's assume we take off our hand from the joystick. The pressure on the high pressure line return on the cylinder returns to 35 by this as a result of the load on the cylinder. If the load on the cylinder is more, you have more pressure. And the pressure on our line is on the high pressure line is 128 bar, and the, on the low pressure line is 38.7 bar. So let's go down. You can see the down is so gradual because we set a very low amount of pressure on our downside, which is just through 100 bar. So we can decide to reduce it further. Bar. And we can decide to reduce this to, to 250 bar. So if we reduce it to 250 bar, the pressure that will go to our cylinder will be reduced to 260 bar. So let's stop. Let's go up again. You can see. So the maximum set point is 250 bar, which is as a result of this res, uh, the reference uh, set point pressure at this pressure reducing valve. This is a pressure reliever, but at the same time, it's functioned as a pressure limiting valve. So any excess pressure will be boycotted and go back to our source. So if we don't have this on the line, our pump might overwork. It will continue to, to generate much pressure because of the angle of the squash plate. The squash plate def deflection here is at full force. So another thing in our electrical circuit is that the command that is responsible for moving our squash plate is the same command that is responsible for opening our valves here. So this command works on both sides it works on the, on the on the on the pump and at the same time on the cylinder to make sure the two sides are actuated at once so if i stop my squash plate goes to middle point that means the only prayer i will see on the line is a little bit above my feet prayer at, at at this point we set our feet prayer on 30 bar you can see we're having 33.5 and 32.6 bar so if we decide to increase our feet prayer on the line you can see then we increase our feed pressure. You can see the pressure on my line. It's almost similar to the feed pressure. So at the same time, now let's go up again. So you can see the pressure is building gradually. It's we're on 250 by now. Then we decide to increase the lifting pressure, which is the cylinder pressure, to 300 bar. You can see the result immediately. So on 300 bar, we can decide to increase to 400 bar, depending on our cylinder specification. And our target load, our pressure is about 400 bar now on the high pressure side. And on the low pressure side, we are only seeing feed pressure because most of the pressure is coming, is returning back to the suction for the pump to prioritize again. Now, our, our pump has a drain, which is a drain line for, us, for any overflow or excess fluid in our pump. So the flow line is connected to our tank supply. This is the only situation whereby our, our pump can be connected to the tank. So it is, with the flow line, app, we, um, the flow line um, relieves all the excess pressure in our pump housing because the system is not a perfect system. So there will be tolerance, there, will be the, there, there is no perfect system. So there will be some minor leakage. So leakage, all the leakage joy are dumped into the tank from our pump through this drain line. So now we'll look at um, a, few, a closed loop system with hydraulic motor. So this is a closed loop system with hydraulic motor. It's similar to the other one, but yet there is no load on our on our motor. So, so that we go forward, our motor keeps rotating, and we can go the other way. Now the prior set point is 200 by, a, but the prior were 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 using at the at the moment is not the 200 by because there is no load on our motor. The, the, the our motor is freewheeling, so we can stop and go to the other direction. This is a simple closed loop hydraulic system. I will repeat myself. Closed loop hydraulic system is a system that doesn't suck from tank and doesn't return to tank. In order for the system to work, you need a feed pump to supply a feed pressure into the line. It is this pressure that the pump will make use of in order to carry out uh, prioritizing and carry out the job for work to be done. So let's go back to our cylinder again. You can see even though our valves 
even when we stop our signal, the valves remain closed and the pressure inside the cylinder still stays at around 400 bar. So next time, we don't want this thing to get close to 400 bar. We want to make use of around um, 350 bar, which is very much enough for whatever we're doing. So we set and our return line to 150 bar. This is the set of our cylinder. So let's go down. The cylinder is gradually going down now. It's gradually going down. Now, as soon as it is down, I will take over from the joystick. Everything remains as it is. So let's go up again. And let's go down. So you in, in close loop hydraulic system you must have a feed pressure pump that supply the lines and most of the time your main pressure pump is a variable displacement by directional pump that's a very big characteristic of closed loop hydraulic system thank you have a wonderful day